Welcome to the Restless Creatives podcast. Comfortable chats with inspirational creatives. Hosted by three self-confessed restless creatives, Lucy Hunter, Fiona Pickles and Bridget Gerling. This week we chat with Vicky Devar, owner of Beautiful Maison Artifact, which specialises in French-Swedish antiques and interior design. Vicky explains how she is enjoying exploring colour, the synergy of working with other creatives, and why shampoo is the last straw for her career in acting. Hello! Hello! <laughs> hello. How are you? Hello, how lovely to see you. Hi, nice to see you. I had you. headphone trouble, my normal ones weren't working, so I had to use the gaming. Hey! Yeah. Impressive! <laughs> Big. Do you look like you're about to talk a plane down? <laughs> testing, <laughs> testing, one, two, three. <laughs> so sorry. You look like, you look like um, Princess Leia. Princess. Ah, yes! <laughs> yeah. That's a lot of I like fantasy. <laughs> well, I've had camera problems, so I look like I'm down a big black hole. <laughs> no, you look gorgeous. I'm loving the tones behind you. And you've got a greyhound on your head. Yes, she <laughs> has. <laughs> Greyhound on my head, yeah. Yeah. I've got a horse in the corner. That's specially nice. for Lucy. Oh, <laughs> hello, Nettie. Oh, that's I think you have a met. So I don't know where they are. So Fiona is at the bottom for me. So he's uh, waving there. Yeah. Yeah. The and, and with the greyhound on her head. And then Bridge is up. Hello. Hi, Bridge. Hi. <laughs> and this is Vicky. Hello. Yes. Hello, Hi, Vicky. Vicky. La Maison <laughs> Artifact. We guessed it might be. Yeah. <laughs> antique antique dealer to the rich and famous. Stars. The stars. Uh, uh, no secrets will be revealed. Oh. Oh. Really? Oh, no. No. Do you want to sign off now? <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> the end of that then. <laughs> okay. It looks very glamorous behind you. Oh, that's it does. Beautiful, beautiful, isn't it? Mm. Well, it's very lovely to see you all and to be here. How exciting. What a clever <laughs> idea you've come up with. Um, <laughs> it's kept us a bit sane, hasn't it, girls? It has. Well, it didn't work that brilliantly. We're not that sane. I know well, we're not sane at all, actually. <laughs> Let's but... just be grateful that we're saner than we could have been. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> How have you been finding it all? Because obviously shop's been shut. Well, there's more to there's more to Vicky than just the shop. Well, I thought there probably was. <laughs> the shop has been <laughs> shut, but we have been working away online, as I think a lot of people have kind of made that transition. Mm. So that's been a complete eye opener. We literally got the website up and going in the first two weeks of lockdown. Wow! Uh, so big change. Um, but I've been working, I've done more houses than I've ever done in my life in the last year because construction didn't close mm. so um I've been very creative and stressed mm. and I haven't, <laughs> I haven't done much gardening and uh my wardrobes are a mess as is like the house but everybody else's house is beautiful yeah. that I've been doing <laughs> yeah they are very beautiful <laughs> So, so Vicky, you 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 would describe your how would you describe yourself as well? I sort of originally got to know you as an antique dealer at Battersea Decorative, yeah, which was marvellous. Um, and then, but you you're also an interior designer. So, could you tell us a bit about how your how you got into maybe the antiques originally, on how that led you into the interior design, or your sort of your story into it, really? Oh, where do you start? Your life flashes before me. Can you ask, <laughs> ask me the questions? You know, what did you have for dinner last night? I like those questions. <laughs> we'll do that at the end. <laughs> I um, I fell into antiques. Well, my my father was an antique dealer, and his mother before him was also a dealer um so I think it was this is why you and Lucy have so much in common I know we yeah. we have the heritage it's it's yeah. it's in the blood and uh I think I didn't realize for years and years that that was the case and um I I came to actually be an antique dealer quite late uh I changed careers I'd been in acting 
for 10 years before that. And a friend of mine, her mother is Caroline Charles, who's a clothes designer, and I knew her really well. She was setting up a new shop in um, Richmond, and she asked me to source some furniture for her. So I went to a little antique market, found some amazing, I thought they were amazing at the time. Now I think, oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's called the journey. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, uh, so little black chairs, which had amazing uh, ivory inset, very Victorian, but pretty. Her aesthetics, very pale. So they looked amazing in one of the changing rooms and we dotted kind of other bits that I found around. And I just found the whole process so exciting and exhilarating. And I uh, sort of had my first encounter with an upholsterer and... Was this while you were still acting at this point? Yes, you, I was, right? I was, um, what's the expression? Moonlighting, yes. <laughs> My agent would ring up and say I had a, a, a meeting uh, the next day, a, a casting, and I'd be in, I don't know, at that point I'd been doing, I was juggling for about a year and they didn't really know. So I'd pop over to France for one of the Brocants and he'd ring and say, you've got a casting, it's really great, it's for shampoo. And I'd be like, I can't get back. <laughs> I, can't, I can't get back in time and I look a mess it's just not happening oh, no. so finally I um I he was very sweet and he said listen you're clearly struggling torn between the two uh so when when the drama of of what you're doing is no longer needed and you want to do something you just let me know so I um I basically he sacked you. I, I, he, he sacked me. <laughs> I failed. I am a failed actress, but I'm no, very good. Not. I'm very good at finding furniture. <laughs> so were you always were you an act, actress on the stage? I did, mainly, <laughs> uh, I did mainly stage for ten years, and then in the last year, as I was um, starting the antique dealing, and I put my first little shop together, I started to get castings for TV commercials, which was, I mean, I'd done a little bit of film, not very much. It, it had been mainly stage, but towards the end, I had uh, two commercials that I got. One was for Kenko Coffee, mm -hmm. yeah, and uh, <laughs> the other one was playing a, a, a mad scientist in an Audi commercial. Was it oh, the I Kenko Coffee that. one that had the story oh, that went oh. with it? <laughs> It went on for I, years as a story. Uh, it was sort of... It was, oh, was it Gold Blend? <laughs> that, that was Gold Blend, gold yes. Blend, that yeah. was Sharon Morn, yes. No, I wasn't uh, Sharon Morn. <laughs> <laughs> God, that would have been nice. Um, so, no, it was... Uh, we. I was one of three women who were drinking coffee in the sort of annex to a gym. And we were watching all the people working out and we were just sipping coffee. So, yeah, it was... I can, see, I can see the pull of the antique furniture, to be honest. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so then I, um, yeah. I, I don't, I, it never surprises me, though, really, when I think about you as, as an actress and then moving into what you do now, because it, it, you, you, when you look at what you do, it's very much um, theatre set. Mm. You know, that kind of, you know, making this beautiful... Uh, for example, your your stands at Battersea Antiques, which are in Chelsea and usually held th three times a year. Is it normally, three times a year. Three yeah, times normally, a year. obviously yeah. not at yeah. the minute at all. But yeah. your stand is just like this glorious theatre set. You know, it <sighs> just transports you into a different world. So That's I can see where really you've taken kind. those skills, though. You know, and and that kind of wanting to create a, another world, really. Mm. I think that's what's really exciting about, you know, when your life has journeys and you do different things that bits of your life inform where you are mm. or where mm. you're going. And that's what makes it sort of rich and varied and, and different. Mm. Um, and you yeah. see things. So I think you're right. I, I do have a kind of an idea of theatre. I like I, I, I kind of like vignettes and I think that comes um, from my theatre training and I think I look back at sort of the plays that I did and you know all the good actors would be warming their voices up and stretching their bodies <laughs> and I would be just shifting the furniture <laughs> minimally <laughs> and kind of making sure the drape was hanging just so and 
you know, it's just yeah, meant to be. So, yeah, Battersea was beckoning from it an was. early age. <laughs> it was, yeah. I think it fascinates me because I think maybe, you know, maybe in another life, maybe I'd like to have trained as a set designer. I don't know. Mind you, you I don't mm. like being inside, but... But you, but you do have that, don't you? You, I mean, over lockdown, you made that amazing wall mural. Yeah, um, that mural was beautiful. Was yeah. absolutely amazing. I mean, that that's a theatre piece, isn't it? Yeah, I suppose yeah. so. Yeah, yeah. It's all make believe, though, isn't it, girls? It's all you know, smoke well, and mirrors. <laughs> <laughs> and well, well, for me anyway. <laughs> silence. No, it's not smoke and mirrors. <laughs> no, but. <laughs> what what you guys do you you know you'll go for your ramble and you'll find some amazing branch or mm. beautiful flower and and you'll see it and the rest of us might not see it in the hedgerow but you'll see it for what it is and you'll bring it back and put it in a bowl with um what's it called a frog you'll use yeah. a frog, a frog. You? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know the terminology <laughs> Very and then you'll you know you'll put it against something and so y- I think you you mm. do the same it's how we see things mm. isn't it mm. and then how you mm. translate it for others to enjoy yeah I was looking yeah. at your website this morning and I think what's really beautiful and what you do so cleverly apart from aside from actually finding beautiful objects beautiful obviously, stuff. Mm. is your use of space yeah ah, you yeah. know just placing things and not being frightened of space using a lot more space than most people would be comfortable using mm. and it speaks volumes it's just mm. glorious mm. that's it really, really gives atmosphere and feeling to what you're showing that's really mm. lovely to hear um it's so interesting to see how others interpret what you do and for me that feeling of space and when maybe the light hits a blank wall and there's just one thing there mm. it's just so beautiful it's mm. a, it's just a moment that can maybe take your breath away um and I think it's quite important especially you know at the moment it's that space to kind of take time and maybe have a f- moment of relaxation or mm. take you outside yourself. I think the light, light's really important. I think light plays quite a big part in, mm. in mm. what inspires me. I love side lighting. Mm. Um, yeah, same. Yeah, you have the most amazing side light in your shop. Yes, I have it coming in from the front door along <gasps> the biggest wall. And, it's uh, just the most delicious light. Ah. And was the shop, <laughs> the shop chosen specifically for that? Or <laughs> did you just keep thinking, no, 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 that one? <laughs> yeah, no wall, no light, no light. <laughs> uh, no, I took that shop over from my dad when oh, he retired. Really? My dad had uh, shops oh. in the Kings Road, which is a really... I'm sure you know it's a really big Mm. exciting uh, long street in Chelsea in London and then when he retired he took the shop in Lily Road which is a lovely street full of antique shops for anyone who doesn't know if you need something there's a really big variety which is lovely and uh, Mm. when he was retiring I I took the shop and I made quite a few changes he had um he had a very different glass front to the shop and he had a very, very small door, which I could never get any of my big stuff in. <laughs> it's kind of like <laughs> so um, I think I've changed the shop three times in, oh, in really? 15, 16 years. I've had to kind of re, redo the, it kept, keeps getting bigger. So I've got marvellous huge front door yeah, so uh, yeah. you could all three visit at once <laughs> <laughs> excellent excellent and um yes I think uh that wall I've recently remodeled and I think um I've been quite influenced by some of the homes that I've been lucky enough to redecorate and lots of them have paneling so I've put uh, sort of day day rail and paneling but I've painted it all one, so it's sort of got a, I hope, a modern feel, mm. but with yeah. sort of just touches of um, the past. That that was the yeah. idea. So it's quite reduced. I, mm. I like. I'm sometimes torn between the really ornate 18th century and um, you know a very modern piece of artwork which has very little, maybe just one slash of colour on it or something. And it's it's sort of playing with those. Mm those worlds I'm really Mm. interested in 
Mm. Oh, you do it so well, mm. so well. I love being here. You're all so nice. <laughs> 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 so is your love always i mean um i mean your your look is it's very swedish isn't it it's very yeah. white it's you know yeah. that, that which um and has it always been that have you always been interested in that european kind of style i have that's sort of my natural that's mm. what i find the easiest um mm. that's what i'm drawn to although growing up uh, I lived with very classical brown furniture, mm. which I, I love as well. And, and sometimes I'll try and mix it in. Um, so my dad was very classical, but my mum was quite modern. So she'd always have, I mean, it was, I'm thinking that it's the 70s, but we'd have kind of, you know, um, lucite lamps that would be sitting on a antique uh, cherry wood chest of drawers or something you know mm. so I think uh, I love that mix mm. but when I uh, when I went to university that was my first sort of exploration on my own of my own style it was all quite pale um, quite Swedish mm. but now as I'm maturing I'm experimenting more with colour and pattern which is a bit of a departure for me a real learning curve um, but it's quite exciting, yeah. So when you say experimenting, what do you mean? She means doing beautifully, <laughs> <laughs> not experimenting at all. Uh, just with the decorating jobs that I'm doing. So, for instance, bedrooms, I, I'm sort of moving from doing very plain headboards, maybe in velvets and just one colour with a different colour wall to um, maybe some wallpaper and I'm even doing my first um, pattern matching headboard where the fabric is the same pattern as the wall and it oh, goes wow. into it seamlessly so I haven't, oh, wow. actually, haven't actually done it yet I've got my meeting uh, at the end of the week to try and work it out but that's the plan it's right. going to look magical that's the plan <laughs> it, it sure will, it will I was going to say, which colours are you drawn to? G given your very neutral, well, that's what I've seen so far. Which colours speak to you? I love um, the greyish, the sort of pinks, the plaster colours. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But actually, increasingly, I love uh, greens. I've been doing a lot of work uh, with the Faro and Ball paints. I've been working with a really amazing paint specialist called Joa Studham. Mm -hmm. Uh, specializes with Farrow and Ball and her paint schemes are really very exciting so she'll do um, you know a dark blue say uh, oval room blue is a classic and then she'll have a uh, very off white with the cornicing and maybe run the color down into the skirting and then have a green door so it's just it's just um, makes you feel very different that kind of mm. Mm mixing so uh, i'm learning about greens mm -hmm. going over to the green side mm -hmm. which you're probably already there with your <laughs> flowers and <laughs> yeah i suppose we do use a lot of green don't we really without although about i have it. a terrible tendency to pull all the green off yeah yeah, yeah. i was, was going to say it's probably green. my least used <laughs> color least used did you say yeah mm. strange yeah. isn't it it's not I mean, when you're using foliage, then yes, obviously you're using green, but in in, a, in, in actual design, yeah, there's very little green, mm. actually. Um, but like Bridge says, you, you tend to sort of like curate it and take the bits off and sometimes, not all the time. <laughs> That's where I'm going wrong. That... <laughs> I don't that, think you're going that, wrong anyway. It's that <laughs> snipping of the leaves where they clump together and it actually looks yeah. a bit, yeah. yeah. It's kind of Vicky Barnerish, that, isn't it, where they just mm. sort of like, Edit a tiny little bit. Just yes. To... Slowly, slowly. One false mm. move and you've gone too far. Yeah. <laughs> and you cut oh, the wrong thing off. That'll be the stage. head. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> it's quite interesting, though, as you say, changing the atmosphere of space with the colour. That must be really quite an exciting adventure for you. Mm. Yes. And it's quite, it's, it's, you know, there are rules, there are, there are rules. And I always think actually what's quite exciting is to not necessarily follow those rules. Mm -hmm. So um, small spaces can have big pieces of furniture and can mm -hmm. be dark or it, it, 
you know, it's it's more about how do you want this space to feel? Um, and that's, I think, where it's quite important working with your clients so that, you know, do they want an exciting house? Do they want somewhere that's just uh, really relaxing to come home to? What, what sort of feel do you want? And, uh, and then you translate that with the pieces that you choose and the colours. Um, colours play a really big part, I think. Interesting, isn't it? Because I don't think any of us are sort of rule followers, no. per se. But I've been decorating one of my rooms and we've got like two sofas um, parallel to each other and a wooden coffee table in the middle. And we were having a debate about the rug. And Brian, my husband, was like, well, we just need to get a rug that goes between the two sofas. So I was doing a bit of investigation. And I mean, one of the rules is, isn't it, that the rug should sort of like encapsulate everything, you know, like both sofas should be sitting on the rug so that everything feels pulled together. And it's like, oh, OK. And when you look at the difference of a picture with the rug just plonked in the middle and a great big rug with the two sofas on, you know, it, it really, really makes a massive difference. And that's a rule that of course you do follow um and it, it's just a really interesting world that kind of opened up to <laughs> yes it's that playing it's that playing with space and what what grounds the sofas mm. and but mm. but then you know some people think that the legs of the sofa can be off the rug yes some like people the front think, legs and the back legs yeah and, and then yeah, some yeah. people think that the whole rug should take up the whole room and you only see the edge but what happens when you've spent a fortune on amazing herringbone floor and actually <laughs> yeah. the floor is just really beautiful in itself so then you think well could I just have maybe an asymmetrical carpet and you know is your eye drawn to something else so I kind of think it depends it depends on the room it depends on the mm -hmm. furniture mm -hmm. and I just I just think you have to go with what feels right for you mm -hmm. and um, what makes you happy and not not worry about you know, if somebody's else. going to say, oh, you yeah. have a tape measure on that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord, you could never say that. Hey, we haven't got a straight wall in the house. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know there were rules you were supposed to follow. That's obviously what No, well, I didn't. It was wrong. only... <laughs> It was only through, it was actually through Pinterest, actually, that started uncovering all sorts of things. But it was quite interesting when you look at you know, what you would normally have done, just put like a smallish rug in the middle. Mm. It would look really insignificant compared to mm. some of the other things. So it has changed what we're going to get. And, and do you find that you can agree on your, on your look? Well, it's really weird because, so I'm really, well, very sort of naturalistic and old fashioned in my taste and Brian's really modern so ah. we've got this kind of like it's a bit like you were saying so like our kitchen we've got an arger in it and some you know, old beams but we've got like a Corian worktop and it's really quite a, a modern kitchen mm -hmm. so it's it's a blending of the two and I quite like mm -hmm. that so we've got a staircase it's a stone staircase but we've got a glass side to it you know so it's sort of mixing the two really. I think that's really exciting and that's mm. that's because it's almost like those contrasts means that you appreciate both. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I, I think that works, that that can work really, really well. I think it's really yeah. interesting as well, isn't it? Because it kind of tells a story about you as well. You know, you're not, you're, you're, your home should surely be a reflection yeah. of you. So you feel, you know, totally, it's, it's not for a book, is it? It's not for a, no, you know, it's not for anyone else, is it? It's no, for and it's really mm. difficult sometimes, actually, because you do, I've, I've had to stop myself before thinking, well, what, what would people think if I did this? And you're like, well, they're not, they're not coming. And then mm. <laughs> nobody ever comes here. So, you know, it doesn't really matter, does it? You know, yeah. please yourself. But sometimes that can be quite hard to please yourself. You feel that you're having to please whoever it is out there. I don't know. It's really odd. It's been yeah, it, no it's been quite funny, hasn't it? In the last year, watching uh, I don't know the news, and you have politicians on the <laughs> telly, and yes. you can you can see <laughs> the bookcase. It's time evolves. <laughs> yes, you know. The, <laughs> to begin with, they're sort of literally stuck on the corridor because, you know, the kids are being put in bed and they can't be it wherever. And then over time, you know, they've been told, really got to do something about your backdrop. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You really and, need to up your game here. Yeah, really. <laughs> and, and, uh, it's, um, it's been wonderful for all us interior people because oh. we've had, yeah. you know, emails saying, Complete do you have insight. anything which is quite large scale, covers a whole <laughs> 
<laughs> did it now. 18th century tapestry that I haven't been able to sell for years. Do you want that? <laughs> Half price. <laughs> <laughs> will immediately make you look like you're in a castle, Mom. <laughs> That's so brilliant. That's so good. Oh, dear. Uh, it's a whole new meaning to the word backdrops, doesn't it? Yes. It really does. <laughs> I'm surprised you weren't inundated, Lucy, with offers. Could you mm. please paint an 18th century Italian view? Yes. <laughs> I know, I think I've missed out on that coming round. <laughs> yeah. Could you do it in five minutes, please? No, <laughs> 63 months. <laughs> well, I guess the other thing as well that's so lovely about and stressful about your job, though, is that you get to work and collaborate with so many different other, yes. you know, specialities. Mm. And that, that must be fascinating, actually, because, you know, whether it's a gilding specialist or an upholsterer or, pattern, you know, paint, paint people, as you were saying. Yeah, that's... Um... That's one of the things I love the most is that being able to feed from other people mm -hmm. and um, learn. I've I've recently done a, um, a project in Stockwell and it was the remodeling of an entire house and the architect and I worked really closely together. And we'd worked together before, but this one was really collaborative. So I was able to say, why don't we knock down the wall on the top floor so as you come up the staircase there's this open and he was able to say Vic I think that colour in the hall should go all the way through so it was really lovely to mm. be able to cross mm. cross feed and mm. uh, it's an incredible learning process when you're up close with people who are professional in their areas mm. and mm. Um, that's mm. just that's been a real privilege in the last mm, eight ten years of, of working really closely with people who are amazing in their field and yeah. generous enough to share and and allow you to sort of be part of that process mm. of um you know showing you why they've made the choices they've made yeah. um I love that and mm. um I think collaborations are just increasingly the most exciting part of of what I do I love yeah. I love that so could you see that becoming more of what you do, sort of, you know, going on from here? Obviously, you need to get back to France at some point and restock yeah, your restock. shop. Restock. Yeah. <laughs> Constantly. But, um, you know, do you see do you see the interior becoming more rather than then? Do you see do you see yourself staying as an antique dealer or do you see the? Do you know what I'm trying to say? Yes, I don't we do, think I do. <laughs> <laughs> it's Are very... you going to go one direction or the other or carry on yeah. with both? Yeah. Going to go back to acting. It's much simpler. A <laughs> shampoo ad. <article>. Yeah. <laughs> much easier than moving furniture I think the thing that I really love is the interiors and creating uh, creating the spaces and seeing uh, literally an empty site and then the scaffold bars going up and literally brick by brick it all coming together and I, I love that so um, the shop's running really well obviously I choose the stock um, but I've got a great team of people who um, are manning the shop and um, years and years ago I remember um, somebody telling me that it was no bad thing to not be in the shop when the customers came because if you were there they always wanted to see you and that actually it's really great to be able to delegate and uh, you know sometimes you need to be there because people want to see you um, but I think on the whole if you're not there then you're free to do other things and I think very often it's all about you know where am I best what what can I best achieve today is it you know is it choosing bricks in a yard or is it uh, I don't know looking at fabrics I, I like having that variation and the mm. choice mm. yeah Definitely. The beauty of having your own business, isn't it? Being able to, yeah. where well, you think you're in control That's, of your day. <laughs> <laughs> That's, but that is exactly it, because at the end of the day, you can, so, I mean, there are deadlines for things, but you can sort of choose what you prioritise, which, which bit is the most urgent, or actually what do you really feel like doing today. Um, mm -hmm. And I, know, I think I'm really lucky in that sense to be able to make those choices is really nice. Mm. I want to shop. Oh, do you? Like most of your shops in my in my studio. Have you noticed? Looking beautiful, Liz. Just the... thinking. Mm, I wonder where 
where that had gone. Yeah, it's gone back as well. was supposed to be on loan <laughs> ten years ago. Yes, but it's I difficult. thought that was in the back of my shop. <laughs> We, we did have a uh, we had a funny moment the other day where somebody bought something from the website just just yeah. just like that and we were all kind of like oh my god it's in Wales. <laughs> <laughs> I had to be very nice to the uh, the post office when I'll come and pick up. So they know you well. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, they do. And, and I had to wrap. I wrapped as if it was a nuclear bomb. This this extremely beautiful terracotta large pot, because you know I was like, oh my god, what if it? What if it? You know, you put what that if it in the post. Yes, oh. yes. Not in the post box. The man <laughs> came and picked it up with his van, and I was like, and I'd written all over it, fragile. This way up, fragile. Do not drop. Fragile. Yes, but you've <laughs> seen them. I mean, oh. I know. Did it get there okay? Well, it we was... had. To, Genius! It's a right. We, we had this funny moment because I said to Vic, I sent her an email saying, "I might send it via." Um, oh, can we can we say it on our podcast? Who this particular courier? A well-known delivery, delivery company. A well-known yeah, delivery. This, this delivery yeah, company. BBC. Yeah. <laughs> I, I said I can get Hermes to come really cheap. No, I'll do this. And Vic's like. Um, I've heard what was it? What was it that um There are all these memes. The memes, that's yes. it. Memes. My, my memes. 13 year old had overheard our phone conversation. She said, Mum, are you using Hermes? I said, Well, we're thinking about it. She said, Have you not seen the memes? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently there are all these memes of these packages coming off the back of a van and being lobbed into people's front <laughs> garden, literally. But over the fence, really funny. So I was quite stressed. I said about to Lou, "Do you know what? We can't because of the memes." <laughs> what's that? What? The memes what's say what's no. The memes? Memes. I think that's very wise. It never ceases to amaze me how many times things do get lobbed over our fence. Actually, really? Mm. Yes, it happens. Thank goodness it wasn't a beautiful terracotta pot. Oh, goodness. <laughs> You're just saying that. It's actually just quite thinking. like that, wouldn't you? Oh my God. <laughs> Look what's in the front garden. <laughs> yes, as long as it was still whole, that would be marvelous. <laughs> Trust me, with Lucy's packing, it's yeah. all <laughs> I think I used an entire roll of parcel tape with fragile written on it, round and round and round and round. You have a great <laughs> career in uh, packing okay. ahead. Great! Of <laughs> all else fails. All else fails. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know several shippers, they'd love you. Love you. <laughs> Great. <laughs> so, have you been able to source anything through this last year? I mean, I mean, you obviously haven't been able to travel, but how have you managed to get beautiful pieces, or has so that just been on hold? I had, um, luckily, I had a really huge. So, I, I used to go every month um, uh, traveling and um, fill fill vans and get it shipped back. But when I um, uh, had my daughter, we um, I had sort of changed my way of working and she, I basically did less trips but bought more so kind of had these insane kind of four day trips where I'd buy enough for three months. <gasps> So exciting. Uh, yeah, so exciting. Sounds it meant like I had juggernauts heading I to had, the UK. <laughs> I had to, uh, I, it literally was big, big, big containers. And I had to increase my storage because what used to happen before was I'd, I'd have a shipment, it would come to the shop and uh, obviously it was just too much. So I've, I've now got a lot of storage everywhere. So if you need anything stored, <laughs> I think I am storage queen officially. Uh, so, um, yeah, I did have quite a lot of stock. And my dad always taught me that if you don't have stock, you actually don't have anything to sell. Mm -hmm. So um, that's been quite lucky in the last year. But I would say that having been an antique dealer for 20 years, I've got lots of, um, not lots, I've, I would say I've got a few really, really good people that I work with in France and Sweden and so they know what I need they know, mm. know what I like and they'll come direct to me and I'm really grateful again for those collaborations mm. because I can't be in France I can't be in mm. Italy I mm. can't you know sometimes there are international fairs in one week in different places and you cannot be everywhere so I'm really grateful for people who've 
become great friends and also colleagues mm. who um, mm. I, I trust. Um, they can send me a snap and it can be a really terrible snap, but because I know them and they mm. know me, I will know what it is. Mm. And, mm. and that's, mm. it's a shorthand, um, mm. which I guess everybody has in, in, yeah. in their world, you know. Yeah. I think that's part of the thing though, isn't it actually, is that, you know, younger people, <laughs> Uh, uh, but we'll look at people with established businesses and think, gosh, how how do how does that work? How do I get there? And they almost want that instant thing, but it's not instant. It is the years of building up yeah. friendships and yeah. and working with people and and trusting and understanding and knowing where you can go. And that takes time, mm. I think, doesn't it? Yes. And also, I think trusting your instincts. And I've always really loved working with the people that I get on with, that I mm. just feel I have an affinity mm. with. And it's mm. not because it's a transaction, isn't it? Mm. You've got something I yeah. want. Yeah. There's a sort of, and um, I just think that's really important. The people, the, the, the personal side of it, for me, comes into it. If I had a choice between, you know, someone I really get on with and someone I'm not uh, I'll go with I'll mm. go with my heart every time I think mm. Um, mm. and I'm just thinking actually there's several people that can be quite tricky but that have beautiful things I might have to revisit <laughs> that <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so <laughs> send someone else in there's this marvelous piece <laughs> just <laughs> can you get it for me <laughs> yeah. yeah I'll give you some cash <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think it's 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 it is exactly as you say, Luce. It's it's building up those relationships and mm. um, being being sort of open to because we all go on journeys, so our tastes yeah. change, and yeah. you know it's mm. just being open mm. to that sort of surprise. Oh, I wasn't expecting this from you, and actually, mm. yes, I like that. I'll go on that journey. Or um, yeah, actually, no, I won't bother. No, I won't bother. <laughs> <laughs> You're 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 somewhere I don't want to be. <laughs> no, no, we'll go a different way. But yeah, I think that's really interesting, and I think it's yeah, no, I think that's. Well, it's really a bit like when somebody recommends a book to you, you think I'd never have chosen that, but you've recommended mm. it, so I'm going to give it a try, and then you're delighted mm. and think, wow, mm. it would never have come off the shelf left to me. Yes, because mm. you've mm. you've gone outside of your comfort zone, but you've mm. trusted somebody else, mm. or mm. they've said it at the right point that you're needing a different book or something. Mm. Yeah, it's mm. it's it's. I think that's also the thing about collaboration is that actually sometimes it's really exhilarating <coughs> when someone. Um, oh, I wish I had a lozenge for you. I know. I need to <laughs> <have> a <drink. laughs> Do you need some dried peas again? <laughs> no, not yet. <laughs> Is that an in joke? I'm missing that. <laughs> Sorry. She, she has these bowls of dry peas. They'll be Fiona and I with a glass of wine and a large bit of chocolate. And there's Bridget with her dry peas. Anyway, sorry, I yeah, completely sorry. interrupted you then. Go on. No, just uh, <laughs> just, just that idea that um, actually sometimes you you need to push yourself. So it's quite nice to work with somebody that actually isn't necessarily the same natural fit mm -hmm. or aesthetic but might challenge you and sometimes you have to compromise but actually that compromise is mm -hmm. really rewarding because mm -hmm. you're given something that you weren't expecting or you find you produce something that you're you're mm -hmm. surprised at mm -hmm. in yourself um, how do you I like to work people. with your clients do you do you like a completely do you like to be left alone <laughs> or how does, how does that work? Your because, well, yes, I was just thinking because it's very personal doing people's spaces, mm. isn't it? But it your really... aesthetic is very, mm. very, you have a very clear aesthetic as far as I've been able to see so far. Mm. So I would have thought an open brief would be lovely. <laughs> how often does that happen? not that often mm. but I think when you um I've I've worked with um a building company and increasingly because the projects have been quite successful they've left me alone so I've had more freedom but I think um it's for me the the um kind of one-to-one -one clients that you have it's really important to 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 like them and get mm -hmm. on because as you say mm -hmm. it's really personal mm -hmm. and they tell you things uh, or they might be upset about something and it has to matter to you as well um, mm -hmm. otherwise you just think why are you fussing about 
I don't know, the colour of the braid on the corner of, of the curtain, you know, it's mm. fine. Mm -hmm. um, it might not be the exact shade, but uh, I don't know, it's got, it's mm -hmm. got to matter. Otherwise, it, it can seem trivial. And of course, it's not because it's, it's, it's where we live. It's how we feel. So mm. um, the mm. feedback from clients is really important. Um, I've done I've done one project where I was completely left alone and it's really lovely but I think actually having parameters is quite a good discipline mm -hmm. and it's quite sometimes again it's quite challenging to have to work within boundaries and uh, it's the same with budgets you know people think that if you're given endless amount for a budget that's mm -hmm. that's great but sometimes it isn't because mm -hmm. If you've got a tighter budget, then you have to be really clever and you have to think, OK, we don't we can't afford silk. But what could look like silk or what would, you know, be a lovely texture mm. and what's the light like? And could we or maybe, you you know, you choose something that you're not expecting. It's all of those things that kind of add up. Makes you work big, harder. To makes think you harder. work harder. Mm. Yeah. And, and mm. think outside the box, which mm. yeah. is also quite nice. Mm. Sort of thinking laterally, isn't it? And just think, right, I can't do that, but how can I do this? Yeah. And make it work. And, and it does sometimes get even better. I that think way. so. Yeah. I suppose and it I, could be even more scary actually to have a completely open brief because then you don't really know whether no, you're going down the right off. track, do you? It's, it's almost like working in a vacuum. And, and there's mm. nothing necessarily to sort of push against or mm. to fight for. Mm. Um, and I think sometimes you know, working with clients, if they like things, that's great. And you feel really good and you kind of push on. But sometimes if they question something, it's quite nice to either think, well, actually, you've got a point. Mm. Uh, that's really important. That doesn't work mm. for you. And I respect that. Or you think, I understand where you're coming from, but you're not getting it. And mm. I need to fight for this. I need to, yeah. this mm. is, this is really important. It's an essential part of the aesthetic and I, I, I need to stand up for it. And so, mm. you know, there are different times. It's, it's mm. what's worth fighting for. What do you actually, until you're challenged, you might not know mm. what you actually really, mm. whether you really love it or not. Mm. Um, mm. Mm. A few days ago, I was doing uh, some curtain fabric in a room that's a very dark uh, grey, pink, smoke trout kind of colour. And the curtains are very, very pale with some yellow through it. And the client quite rightly said, there's nothing in this fabric that links it to the wall. And I knew exactly what he meant, but that was kind of the point. Uh, you know, it's meant to be a sort of bit of a zing and... A contrast um but it was outside the aesthetic that he was used to actually that I'm used to it was a bit of a step for me as well so those sort of moments you I'm quite grateful for because it makes you think actually am I going do lally and it's I'm, <laughs> I, I'm trying too hard and he's absolutely right let's do something that matches or is this really groundbreaking and this is the one uh, the jury's out still not sure <laughs> going to revisit, revisit. <laughs> my, my camera's looking bad your sound's bad so I think you're all marvelous I'm loving this <laughs> you do this every morning it's much more fun absolutely <laughs> we all get talk first thing we do like the slightly sort of raggedy side of it though we don't want it to be perfect and what are you, you know, saying sort of too no I'm not what do you think? You know, I mean, that's why we leave like doorbells ringing and things in because it just well, it's much it more real, in real life, isn't it? doesn't it? You know, the idea is that we kind of feel like we're, we're obviously not, but that we're actually really together. Now, if you're sitting around somebody's kitchen table, table and the doorbell yeah. rang and somebody was delivering a lovely terracotta pot, you'd rush off and go and get it, wouldn't you? <laughs> in a thousand bits. <laughs> if it was us four around the table, there'd be a stampede. <laughs> Oh, out of my way. Get that coffee. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got some very exciting news. I don't. Things is going out. Mm, yes, I can see this. Yes, it is. Yeah. <laughs> so, Vicky has been very, very kind in saying that for my book launch, we can have it in her shop. Ooh. <laughs> Sorry, oh, like, that, was, <laughs> that was the sound of chinking bottles. <laughs> yeah, most <laughs> relevant. <laughs> the sound of somebody falling over. <laughs> okay, right. So, so exciting. Book hotels. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or we'll be sleeping on the shop floor. <laughs> <laughs> London launch. London, so London good. launch. Yeah. yeah. In October. That's going oh, to be how perfect, lovely to look forward perfect, to perfect something. place. Oh. Yeah. And hopefully we'll be out of lockdown by then. Or oh, the we back will be. <laughs> We've just got to wait for you to be vaccinated, Luce. Yeah. And then we'll be fine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> The only one that hasn't been vaccinated is because I'm so young. So young, <laughs> sprightly. <laughs> How did you guys feel about the vaccine? Did you have any side effects? I was absolutely no. fine. Everybody Just was saying sore arm. Yeah, same. Yeah. Exactly. No, no side effects at no. all. I, I, kept... I did sort of plan it round work, so it, I didn't have anything really important after it, mm. just in case I was taken to my bed or something. But no, it didn't. And you find yourself <laughs> sort of fun. super studying yourself, don't you? Thinking, oh, yeah, so... yeah. I felt a little dizzy. Was that it? No, Bridge. Every time you sit sit down and then stand up, you feel a little dizzy. You have low blood pressure. This has nothing to do with the vaccine. Yeah. I was quite yeah. disappointed actually to have no symptoms or anything. No. Uh, most of the people I, people I knew last week who had it at the same time as me, they were all. I'm really feeling not great. I'm in my bed. Oh, really? I, don't, I was thinking, what's wrong oh, with me? Nice. One of them said, I think the older you are, the better you deal with it. I was like, oh, that's not good. <laughs> that's Thanks not, very much. That's not kind. <laughs> had they all just had too much to drink the night before and were blaming it for that, do you think? Ah. Ah. <laughs> that's going to be my ploy. <laughs> <laughs> I um I found it really momentous, and uh, as it was going in, I was watching, and my nurse was really Ooh. shocked, and she said, "Oh, she said we don't get many lookers, <laughs> don't get many watchers." <laughs> yeah. I said, "But it's historical. It's, it's historical." I didn't get a chance to look. Honestly, it was so fast. Not? It was over, and I hadn't even known she'd done it. Really? really? Yes. <laughs> uh, I mean, apparently, our surgery had I think nine hundred people on Saturday. So wow. they were really, really fast. Mm. On, I don't think I was in that room for more than 10 seconds. It was Really? Because I had the whole blooming Spanish Inquisition. I like, did too. Do you, yeah. do you have blood clots? Do you do this? And do no. you do that? And have a seat? I said, do you want me to sit down? Because when Brian had it, he was told, if you don't mind, can you stand up? Because we have to disinfect the seat when you sit on it. And That's rude. It's like, am I all right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's very rude, isn't it? <laughs> and it, it seemed to go on for ages and then... I saw about four people before you got there. Really? It? Is that, yeah. No. In fact, I rolled my sleeve up to one woman and she wasn't even going to inject me. It was, she was just... Giving you tea. Was just offering yourself to anybody. Do you want my arm? <laughs> That's actually what I felt like. Is that area of my arm? <laughs> no, I was really shocked. It was over and I was all bra I was bracing myself when it was finished. <laughs> and it had happened. <laughs> Brace yourselves. <laughs> no chance for looking. I wouldn't have oh, looked anyway. Though, I don't think. Think. Yeah, well, apparently it's not normal. Not normal to look at a syringe going oh, in. No. <laughs> well, you don't really want to. <laughs> well, no, that's the point. Some of us do. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Weird. I don't know. <laughs> Just curious. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a skill. Yeah. <laughs> I was learning. <laughs> learning how not to faint <laughs> right i've got some quick questions for you that oh, here we oh, go marvelous actually i'm lying i haven't and i need to put my glasses on hang on bear with <laughs> do i need to cheat i've got my phone i could google <laughs> hang on bear with oh we are we are we are killing me <laughs> Where have I put them? Oh, no. Anyway, I, I, I said it before, and it, 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 when we're in the middle of something else, I'm very excited that we're going to come and see your shop, Vicky. Yeah. I'm because I was thinking we really, really need to come, and now we never can. I'm so excited to meet you all properly, and it's just lovely to see you all. And thank you for the invite. And you, London, I can't wait to have. I, I have you invited me. I'm just coming to. <laughs> <laughs> I just said to Vic one morning, I was like, no, I need to talk to you. I said, what do you think about this? Please say no. And she's like, what, what, what? And I said, can we have the book launch in your shop? I thought, oh. Anyway, so she said I was yes. over the moon. I can't, I think it'll be beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. It, it will be beautiful. Urns and yeah. everything. Oh, terracotta pots and Perfect flowers. Place. You can demonstrate your wrapping skills as well, Luke. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Are you going to sign books and everything? I do. Oh. <laughs> I do, if I ever finish it. <laughs> I have the perfect signing book table sorted. Yeah. <laughs> and no doubt a beautiful <laughs> chair. Yeah. <laughs> And the perfect wall to style her against. Pen. <laughs> I think you'll find it's Quill. a feather. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful coloured ink. Oh, it's going to be so stylish. Stop <laughs> the book. <laughs> oh, there's a book involved. Oh. <laughs> oh. Actually, what we should talk about is what you're going to wear. Because oh. let's face it. I've forgotten how to do Well, at the moment, pyjamas is about all I've got. <laughs> no, <it>? right? <laughs> Your pyjamas. <laughs> what about my dungarees? I love them. Love them. Dungarees and pyjamas. I think, I think I'll come in my dungarees. I might wash them first. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> that would be lovely. I'll, I'll give them a little Very turn honored. in the washing machine. <laughs> Get rid of the dirty knees. <laughs> Have you found those questions yet, Luce? Yes, I have. Oh, right. Okay. Oh. <laughs> really? Yes. What song did you last listen to? Sorry, say oh, again. Luck, what you? song? <laughs> what song did you last listen to? Oh my goodness! Uh, probably this morning, R Rihanna under my umbrella. Ella. Ella. Oh really? Ella. Oh, don't sing that. It'll <laughs> rain for fourteen weeks. <laughs> 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 we have a uh, we have a house rule. It's the only house rule. Always have a dance at breakfast. That's oh, nice. That's a good oh. rule. Sounds <laughs> a bit energetic for me, to be honest. Maybe <laughs> after a coffee. A coffee as well, though. Coffee and a dance. Yeah, it's essential. Okay. Unless you're running late for school. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What's your biggest distraction? My biggest distraction. Oh. I know it's probably been a long time since you've had time to have a distraction. Yeah, housework. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I get distracted because I, I feel that I haven't actually, I've kind of not been in my own home as much. Uh, and so I'm distracted now by all the things that I feel that I should be doing. I think it's the press you know, everybody's saying, I've been painting murals, Lucy, or I've done my wardrobes, or I've had time to think about, and I just think I'd actually really like to spend a bit of time on my own, Hoovering. on my own, <laughs> on my own home, yeah, and have kind of, yeah, I need a break from other people's yeah. Yeah. books. I love my books. I get, I, I, I think mm. I must just look something up, and then I find I've spent twenty minutes instead of two minutes. So yeah, I'd say that leads me on to the next question. Ah. What was the last book you read? Or what is the current book you're reading? Um, at the moment, I'm reading a book on Cy Tombley, um, which is one of my favourite, favourite painters and great inspiration. But um, oh, I was just going to say, I'm afraid I have no idea what you mean by that. <laughs> <laughs> Same. <laughs> I thought it was a... Cy Tombley. Religion. Oh. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. That's where I was kind of going thinking, what is that? <laughs> um, it's uh, Cy Tombley is an, uh, an extraordinary uh, artist creator and the book is all about his home and studio, so that. But in terms of escapism, I am I'm going again with the Tracy Chevalier. So uh, that whole, you know, her, her books, Girl with the Pearl Earring, that sort of, I just mm. feel like something. But... Uh, yeah, Cy Tombley is the word for the day. I'm going to look that to look up when we finish. Yeah. <laughs> I'm feeling really embarrassed that I didn't know that now. No, I didn't know either. Thank goodness. <laughs> we could be heathens we together. See why Cy Tombley. Tombley, okay, yeah. got it. What era is it? Um, what era? So th this century. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So recent See, history. Got recent, yes. Didn't know if it was like fifteenth century. Oh, you'll love you'll love his work. And then he had the most amazing um one of his places. So his he created work in the places that he lived. And uh you'll some of them have lots of space, which was what we talked mm. about at the beginning. Do you know do you know Cesar Cesar Manrique? No, I'm writing it oh. down right now. I, I feel slightly <laughs> like I'm Caesar. obsessed by this. I sort of like squeeze him into any conversation I can possibly. Oh, tell me. Cesar Manrique, mm -hmm. um, he's a 
he was born in, in Lanzarote and he was an artist, architect, all sorts of different things. And he built his house out of a lava bubbles and he's just the most inspiring person and he has different buildings and different homes that you can go around and studios and so it just sounded a bit similar to what you were talking about amazing actually, I'll look it up it is really inspirational mm -hmm. amazing little diversion sorry lovely <laughs> um that thrown her yeah <laughs> what item would you take onto a desert island what one item item that's oh. a tough question for Vicky. Oh. That is, isn't it? Someone who can things. Cope. You can deal with it. Just one item. I mean, could it be one item with lots of things in it? No, that's cheating. Well, it depends what that item <laughs> might be. <laughs> <laughs> can I take my house with all the belongings? <laughs> oh, my God. God, your mind races. I'm thinking, can I take my daughter? But of course, that's not an item. It's a person. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will take um, pen and pencil. That's two. Ooh. Oh, that's harsh. <laughs> Surely you can allow a pen. You can't Scratch just give a pencil. A board. <laughs> Scratch a board. You know, those... If you took a pen, then you could scratch into a, a stone. Oh, I'll take a knife then. I'll take a knife. Really amazing. Oh, surely a pen knife. and pa paper. That's a she's, bit harsh. she's really unreasonable. I might sign off now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I've got somewhere else to be. <laughs> my grandmother, my grandmother uh, always had this thing. We, the desert island district, and I always remember her saying, if I only had one thing on a desert island, I'd take a bra. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be so <laughs> useful. <laughs> what did Joanna to say? Lumley, she had one. I was just going to say, she, when she, she? she made name. shoes out of them. Yeah, she, <laughs> she did. She, did. Yeah. she started to get sore she feet, so she turned her bra cups into shoes. I could make some very big shoes. <laughs> <laughs> I could make a hammock. <laughs> I could make little uh, fairy shoes. <laughs> <laughs> you could make a thimble with your <laughs> <laughs> now, now I'm thinking, of course, the really clever answer is you take a cocoa bean, so then you'd always have chocolate or, you know, you plant it or this, it, you could have given me advance warning on this. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry. Uh -uh. I guess you won't be sending back right now, do you? I'm going to spend some... <laughs> Can you edit? Are you ed <laughs> okay, last one. This is going to be mean for her as well. Mean? Wow. They've all been horrific. <laughs> She needs a lie down. <laughs> Wine or gin? Oh, both. Large <laughs> glasses mixed with an umbrella. Are we still on the island? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's just a stupid question. You can't possibly choose between them. Uh, at a push, I'd say wine. Mm. There's mm. more in the bottle. But at the book launch, there'll be everything. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but no books. <laughs> 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 oh, it's been so lovely talking to you thank oh, you for having me it's so lovely to meet you all thank oh, you it's been a real treat so, it's <laughs> lovely to actually see you in one place normally I'd in the car <laughs> oh really <laughs> <laughs> well oh. when's this book launch then Luce uh, we've got it in the diary haven't we it's October the 7th 8th 9th it's the weekend isn't so it? we'll see you then See Can't you then. Wait. Can't wait. That's so it. nice to actually have a date in the diary, isn't it? I know. And actually see some people. Mm. <laughs> yes, in real life. Yeah. Yes. I wonder whether we'll still have to wear masks. Yes, I think we will. Are we allowed to hug, do you think? No. Mm. I don't think so. No. But let's fast forward to October and review this and see. But they were they were being quite pessimistic on the news recently about mask wearing and social distancing will happen for a few years oh my goodness me. and we're having mm. uh, the news in london they're starting talks of the third wave so yeah just yeah. don't know do you mm. i no. think um we shall see how it goes yes so should we have a mm. zoom book launch <laughs> we will oh. we're going to do this in october Luz. don't worry oh. Yeah. have faith she's got big doors she said but she yeah. can leave open <laughs> yes <laughs> there's so much fresh air <laughs> bring your jumpers let's all wear jumpers yeah, jumper absolutely. book launch yeah. <laughs> 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 oh well we'll let you go now thank you very much for 
let you go. Thank you so oh, much. Thank you. thank you all. Yes. See you Obviously. soon. See you Take very care. soon. Bye. 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 You've been listening to the Restless Creatives podcast. To ensure you don't miss our next episode, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, the Restless Creatives podcast. If you'd prefer to listen rather than watch us, you can catch us on one of your favoured podcast providers. For more sneak peeks and behind the scenes fun, visit our Instagram at the.restlesscreatives or visit our website, therestlesscreatives.co.uk.